What's going on, everybody? It is <clears throat> February 5th, Monday slate. Football is finally over. We don't have to discuss the outcome of that game, but we've got seven games tonight. And it's like the main attraction now. It's all NBA. So I took the weekend off, didn't play Saturday or Sunday. Um, had a crappy night Friday. Uh, you know, went went full bust on Friday. I don't mean like every dollar I have. I just mean I didn't I didn't return any money on Friday. I had like 274. It happens. Um, let's just dig in. So first up is Pistons Blazers. Uh, well, I guess first and foremost. So the first two games: Pistons Blazers, Pacers Wizards, and then Clippers Mavs. Those are the only three games that have lines right now. So the rest of that is all made up. Anyway, um, Pistons 106.25 implied total. They are two point favorites at home. Um, they have the sixth highest implied total. So let's see. First up is Blake, 9100 on FanDuel, 8500 on DK. Let's see. I do like him a little bit here. Needs 45. Yeah, I'm fine with Blake. No issues there. Um, he's dangerously close to a two on DK. If he had different position eligibility, do I have it open? Oh, I don't. Not important. All right, Drummond ten five on Fanduel, ninety two hundred on DK. So you're looking fifty two ish on Fanduel. That's pretty healthy. Ooh. Although he's done it three times in his past two weeks, and that was a 66, a 72, and an 87. So, um, how do I feel about that? Why wouldn't Drummond have a good night? He's still just a three for me. That's a, that's a big price, and like. I don't know what it is, but Portland's defense has been good this year. I, I don't know how it suddenly happened. I don't know if that's just continuity, but I have to assume that Portland's defense is going to continue to be decent. I need to try to get the you know Portland not having a good defense narrative out of my head from, I don't know, the past five years. <laughs> Stanley Johnson, no interest whatsoever on FanDuel, 5700 way too expensive. Uh, he is fine to play on DraftKings, however. 4800 there. Um, 5X gets you to 25 for Stanley. You know, he's playing 30-plus minutes. Hard to, uh, hard to fade something like that in its entirety. I'm not saying seek him out, but, you know, that's a, that's a price you're looking for. Same sort of scenario for Ish Smith. Um... I'm going to say that he's a 4 on FanDuel and a 3 on DK. He needs... He's 6,500 on FanDuel and 5,500 on DK. That's just insane. He actually really looks good on DK. 25, yeah, so he would need 27.5 to hit 5x on, on DK. You know, last 3, 30 or higher. Um... That's just a good price for him. Don't have a ton of interest in Reggie Bullock. I guess you can talk me into Kennard as a four, but I'm not really stoked about that. Not enough minutes. Let's go to Portland. Oh, I burned my tongue in the roof of my mouth on buffalo chicken dip yesterday. Now I feel like someone's stabbing me in the roof of the mouth every time I take a sip of that hot coffee. Okay, so they left Dame's price down. That's fun. Um, he's going to be ridiculously honed. 8,100 for Dame. Needs 40. What are they doing? Yeah. Um, okay. uh, 
he's a one. Uh, I mean, Dame Lillard shouldn't be eighty one hundred dollars. He's gonna show up a ton, I would imagine. One hundred four implied total is tenth. I mean, I'm not worried about Ish Smith. It's not like a defensively incredible team. I, I will happily take Dame Lillard across the board. Nine thousand on Fanduel. Or 9,000 on DK, rather. So I'm going to say that he's a FanDuel 1. Um, I don't even necessarily know if I think that he's a 2 on DK. Why did his price drop so much? I mean, I know that it happened over the weekend, but... From 9,400 to 8,100... Yeah, I'm going to say that he's a 2 on DK. I, I like the matchup. Um, you know, not having Tobias Harris or Avery Bradley is going to be interesting for, a, you know, that team to gel defensively. That's a, you know, they're moving out a lot of minutes. So, yeah, I think that's a, a good spot for Dame. CJ is 7,000 on both sites. So you're looking for 35. Um, yeah, he's been, you know in that area has the ability to go ham I, I can't I can't say that I love it but I'm comfortable saying he's a three Aminu uh, down to 4800 on FanDuel now starting to get into a place where I think I could roster him again you need 25 from him he's done that in four of his last six um, he's a four for me I don't want to go crazy or anything but He'd be fine. Uh, don't have a ton of interest in Evan Turner. Don't really have a ton of interest in Nurkic. 6,100 on Fandle would need 30. Um, I mean, he's done it four out of the last seven, so maybe that's just me. I'll say that he's a four. I just don't trust his minutes. No look at Ap Napier or Ed Davis, so we'll move on. Pacers hosting the Wiz. Uh, Pacers 107.25 implied total is fifth. Should be should be a pretty good game actually. I'll actually be happy to watch that one. Or actually, you know what? I'll probably be watching the Pistons Blazers. I hope it's on League Pass. All right, Oladipo is 9,300 on Fanduel, 8,400 on DK. What a chasm! 46 would be your mark. Um, he's done that, we'll say, three times. I uh, don't love the matchup, although it is a little bit better with Wall out. He's just a four for me uh, on FanDuel. He'll be a three for me on DK. Ooh, Victor, three. I flip flop the tier and sight for myself. I figured. I don't always type site, so I shouldn't have to tab through it. I know nobody cares about that. Uh, Thad Young, 5,900 on FanDuel, 5,600 on DK. Let's see. Needs 30. Hit it four times. Not a horrible matchup. I'll say three across the board. Then Collison, 5,600 on FanDuel, 5,600 on DK. You're looking 28. Um, he's been right there in the last two. Had a 33-pointer, a 31-pointer. Went for 50 earlier in this uh, two-week stretch. Yeah, I mean, that's a, that's a great price for Darren Collison. He's more like a two-and-a-half. Let's think about this. 50, you know, I'm fine with saying that he's a 2 on DK. It's a 3 on FanDuel. Price is obviously not even remotely close. It's, it's good. Oh, wait. He's a 2 on FanDuel. He's a 3 on DK. I don't know what I just said. I flip-flopped that stuff in my brain. Then Miles Turner, 7,400 on FanDuel. Not super appealing. That's 37. Um, still having some soreness in his knee. Did put up two 40-point games, but... 
if you're looking for Miles Turner, you want him on DK. Um, 5,800. That's just insane. Uh, his 6x price would be 36. I'm totally cool with that. Uh, he's a 2 on DK. Just pay attention to injury news. Um, but... I, I can't imagine not wanting to have some of Miles Turner, especially with the way that he spaces the floor. If Miles Turner plays, you know, Miles Turner shoots 21% of his shots from three. If Miles Turner plays, you and gets his normal run. So I've got him at 30 minutes. If he plays one of these games and gets 32 or 33 minutes, you got to assume that that's going to have a negative impact on Gortat, and we'd be more likely to see, you know, Jason Smith or you know, the Mike Scott, Markeith Morris at the four and the five type lineups. I don't know. Something to think about. Let's go to the Wiz. <sighs> Wizards 105.25 implied total is eighth. First up is Bradley Beal. 8,400 on FanDuel. 8,900 on DK. I'm not totally wild about it. He needs 42. Um, he's been there in three of the four without Wall. How much has his price moved? I want to say that it's been pretty steady. Jesus. Okay, so he's back down to where it's supposed to be. Brief jump to 9,200. If it were a better matchup, I might have a different feeling about it, but Beal's just like a normal old three for me. It does fit, you know, the Pacers do give up the threes. Um, hmm, I should look into what Beal's shot chart looks like without Wall. My, my guess would be that he would take less threes. Ah, it doesn't show up like that. Doesn't matter. Markeith Morris, 5,900 on FanDuel, 6,000 on DK. So you're looking for 30. Uh, he's done that in four of his last five. Been playing more minutes. I think that he'd be in line to play more minutes here. Um, so I'm going to say that he's a three. I'm also going to sneeze. No sneeze, apparently. Every time I think I'm going to sneeze on here, it's it's like my mind tells me that I'm not. It just shuts it down. All right, Otto Porter, 7,000. Um, I don't really have any interest in it at that number. He, I know that he's hit 40 twice, um, but I just I can't get there. It's a little too high. He should be like 6,400 or so. No interest in Sadoransky. No interest in Ubre. Uh, Gortat at 5,200. I don't think the game's going to play out for him to be uh, like a part of it. So I think Beal and Morris are the only two things that I'm looking at. <laughs> now the Heat. Heat hosting the Magic. I have the Heat at a 108 implied total, which would be fourth. Um, they, and I have them as seven-point favorites at home. This should be a, a good matchup for the Heat. It's a shame their current team structure uh, rarely allows for everybody, anybody to look like ridiculously awesome. Josh Richardson continues to be priced in the mid-sixes. Um, 6,500 on FanDuel, 6,300 on DK. He needs just over 30. Um, hits that pretty regularly. He's just sort of uh, easy filler. But this is a good uh, good matchup overall for the team. So I do want to focus a little bit here on the Heat. I'll, mo I'll almost assuredly have one guy. And you know wouldn't totally be bummed if I had two. But the prices aren't the best. So I don't know how easily it's going to get to that point. Uh, Dragic. 7,000 on FanDuel, 7,300 on DK, so he needs 35. 
Um, had 53 in his last game out. He has been all over the place, uh, cratering in minutes sometimes. Um, but I think that he's in a really good spot here. If I had to guess, he'd be the one of my main priorities. Uh, this is not the best game for Wayne. Uh, Orlando does limit people from shooting threes. The price is still fine, but he's a four for me. I don't expect to have him. James Johnson also a four. Uh, Justice Winslow, though, 4,200 on FanDuel, so he would need 21. Um, you know, gets there from time to time. He's had three games at value in the last two weeks, but he's 3,700 on DK, which is just a ridiculous price. So I'm going to say that Justice Winslow is a FanDuel 4 for me and a DK 3. And I would guess that he's going to pop up a lot on DraftKings um, just because of that price point. Um, not a ton of interest in Tyler Johnson. Kelly Olynyk looks a little bit better. 5,100 and 5,200. I'm not going to go nuts about it, but I'll say that he's a three. And then Whiteside, um, you know, I just, I, I can't trust the minutes right now, particularly at that price. So I'm going to move on to Orlando. The Magic 101 implied total would be 14th, and that would be dead last on the slate. Uh, Aaron Gordon at 8,500, I have zero interest in, particularly against the Heat. Um, 7,800 on DK, I, I have no interest in that either. And that's assuming that he plays. If he doesn't play, obviously things will open up a little bit differently for the Magic. But for right now, I am projecting him in, and I am not projecting him anywhere near a lineup that I'll have. Uh, Evan Fournier, 5,800 on FanDuel, 5,800 on DK. He's had this weird minutes shave uh, since Gordon has gone down. But we'd be looking at 30 for Fournier. Um, almost got there in 27 minutes a couple nights ago. It's sort of like his cap, but I'm going to say that he's a four just because I sort of like his price. Then Jonathan Simmons, 4,500 on FanDuel, 4,700 on DK. Uh, I sort of like the matchup for him outside of the fact that Miami is just really good defensively. But 4,500 is an interesting price. Only needs like 22 to hit value, which is sort of where he always is. Um, so I'm, I'm okay with saying that he's a three on Fandle and a four on DK. Um, if you wanted Alfred Payton on DraftKings, I'd be fine with that. That's not something I would seek out, but I don't want too much of Orlando. Go to the Pels now. This one's going to be interesting to look at. Pelicans, 108.5 implied total, which would be third. Uh, slight favorites over the Jazz. Wow, this is going to be interesting. Okay. So Anthony Davis is 11-7 on FanDuel. He's 11-2 on DK. What's AD's history against the Jazz like? Oh, it's burning my mouth so much. Okay, so he has gone gone off from time to time. He just, he needs, you know, 60 basically, which he's going to get close to just by default. He's a three for me. Um, it's hard now with him being a center. We'll see where the rest of the value lies. Drew Holiday, 7,300 on FanDuel, 7,200 on DK. So we're looking 36. Um, you know, three straight games in the mid-30s. He's just sort of always right around there. I, I'm cool with it. But here's the one that matters most. Miritich, 7,500 on FanDuel, 5,800 on DraftKings, which is ludicrous. So he needs... We got, I got to look at it in two separate steps. So he needs 37 for value on FanDuel. He's played one game. He put up 48 fantasy points. Um, I think that he's right on value. So for me, 
Miritich is a uh, FanDuel 2. Fifty eight hundred on DraftKings. He's a DK one and it's not close. Dude needs thirty six just to hit six X. I've got him projected for two and a half points more than that. Fire up Nico. He's gonna be in every lineup. After that I don't really need anything and I'm not interested in more Miller or Clark or Rondo. Um Yeah, it's uh it's the Nico Miritich show tonight, particularly on DraftKings. Great, absolutely amazing spot for him. Uh, to the Jazz. So I'm assuming Donovan Mitchell plays. But Jazz would be uh, 105.5 implied. Blah, 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 blah. I don't know what I'm saying. 105.5 implied total, which would be seventh. Um. I am going live before lock tonight, so that should be fun. Wife is uh, heading out of town tonight, so next three nights will be very much uh, fantasy focused. Donovan Mitchell, eight thousand on FanDuel, seventy-one hundred on DK. So we're looking for forty. Did that in the two games prior to being out. Missed the game on the third. A couple days to get back to normal. Um, it's a really good matchup. Pell's defense, not exactly anything special to guards. Whoop. Um, I'm comfortable saying he's a three. And um, I'm comfortable saying he's a two on DraftKings. 7100 and is an exceptional price. My man Ricky Rubio now all the way up to 7,000. It's so depressing. Loved just clobbering Rubio at 5,200 and 5,300 because it's just, or 49, those two games at 4,900. No brainers. No brainers. He's now up two extra thousand dollars. He's been playing really well. Um, put up 47 in his last one uh, without Donovan Mitchell. Three straight games in the 40s. Insane. Now, with that said, uh, I won't have any part of Ricky Rubio at $7,000. That's that shit crazy. Um, 6,500 on DK. He's right about at that level where, you know, you can fit him in if you w were doing some sort of jazz stack. But other than that, we'll look at Gobert. 7,300 on FanDuel. 7,400 on DK. So you need 36 and change. I think that Gobert looks really good there. Said. One, two, three, four games in the 30s, right at that number. Did go big on a 46er. So I'd be fine saying Rudy Gobert as a three. Joe Ingles, 4,400 on FanDuel. That's definitely something that needs to get paid attention to. Um, Pell is not exactly great at stopping three point frequency, so that fits Joe Ingles pretty well. Um, you need him to get to 22. Can get there from time to time. I'm just gonna say that he's a three on FanDuel. I, w I wouldn't take him on DK at five thousand. And then we need uh, Derek Favors, fifty four hundred on FanDuel, fifty six hundred on DraftKings, so twenty seven. Three straight games in the thirties. Um, he should be a, sort of a tough matchup for Miritich, I would guess. Uh, I'm going to say that he's a fan duel three. Actually, he's probably just a straight three. He's just more important on fan duel. And then Rodney Hood. So, assuming Rodney Hood plays, and assuming Rodney Hood plays, you know, minutes that you would expect him to play, I've got him at 26 right now. Um, it's something I want to keep an eye on to see if we know that he's going to be playing less minutes. But he's 4,000 on fan duel, which is insane. Um... If Rodney Hood is going to play more than 20 minutes, you got to play him. You, like, it's just, you have to play him. Um, Rodney Hood at 4,000 is a fan duel, too. He's 4,900 on DraftKings. I'm going to say that he's a 4. 
this is probably one of the more important pieces of the night to pay attention to. Um, any word that we can get that Rodney Hood is going to play any additional minutes. Um, I mean, he he's basically he's as close to a lock as you can get at that price. It's just confidence in his body, basically. To the Nugs, Nuggets 110.5 implied total would be first. Um, I have them as seven-point favorites at home against the Hornets. First up is Will Barton, 7,200 on FanDuel, 6,200 on DK. The Denver's pricing on DraftKings lately has been insane. Uh, we need him to get to 36. Four straight games in the 30s. Um, hasn't really gone crazy. I'm fine with Will Barton. He's a three for me on FanDuel, and that 6,200 price tag is is nuts. So he's a two on DK. Gary Harris, 6,400 on FanDuel, 6,300 on DK. You're looking for 32. Um... He's had three games in the 30s in the past six. Uh, his non-30s games were, you know, a little bit undervalued, but I'd be comfortable saying he's a three. Nikola Jokic, 9,900 on FanDuel, which is way too expensive. Just not close. He's got the upside, clearly, but you need him to hit 50. Had the 72-pointer uh, a couple nights ago, but otherwise, it's, you know, mid-40s, which is great, but... Not at that price. Um, he's 8700 on DK. I'd be fine with having him on DraftKings. I, I'm, I don't know why I'm saying Nikola Mirotic. Nikola Jokic. Um, yeah, I, I wouldn't take him on FanDuel. I'd rather have Gobert for a little bit less. Jamal Murray, 6600 on FanDuel, 6,400 on DK, so we're looking 33. Um, I do like the matchup for him. I just don't like how the Hornets just kind of defensively sh make me antsy. I'm just going to say that Murray is also a three. And then Wilson Chandler. What a dude. 3,800 on FanDuel, uh, 4,000 on DK. I don't love it, but um, call it a four. He might make things work for you at that price point. To the Hornets. 103.5 implied total, which would be 12th, and the assumption is that Marvin Williams will be back. Or at least that's my assumption for right now. Kemba up to 9,000. I know he's been playing exceptionally well. Needs 45. Um, he's hit that in one, two, three, four. I mean, you can say five of eight, but we'll say four and a half of eight. But there's no way that I'm taking Kemba on the road in Denver on a back to back with a price point of 9,000. Just not happening. Dwight, 8,800. Uh, so you're looking for 45, basically. He's had one, two, three, four, five games above 50. I have no reason to think that this would be awful for Dwight. I like that his price is back down a little bit. It's just a three for me. Um, I don't want to go too crazy. Again, back-to-back -back in Denver. It's tough. I don't really have any interest in Batum. MKG at 4,400 is interesting to me. He would need 22. Um, he's just sort of all over the place. So if you were looking for some sort of exposure to this game in a GPP setting, I think MKG is worth at least a, a peak. That should be a three. To the Kings we go. Sacramento Kings, 104.5 implied total, which would be ninth. I'll have them as one-point favorites versus the Bulls, actually. That probably will change, but it won't matter too much. This game is not entirely that appealing. It's got a little bit of interest. So Willie Cauley-Stein is 7,000 on FanDuel and 6,900 on DK. 
So you're looking for 35 out of Stein. Um, he's been in the low 30s in his first two back after injury. Has the ability to put up, you know, 50 plus. Chicago, not the best defensively. Um, so I definitely like Willie Cauley Stein here. Um, that 7,000 price tag is not too shabby. Uh, De'Aaron Fox, I'm not wild about him. I like him more as like an actual basketball player than a fantasy basketball player. Needs 30. Um, been playing okay. You know, 28, 29, 31, 33. He's uh, perfectly functional. I'll say he's a three. Uh, Bogdan on DK at 4,700. So you need, let's just say, you know, 28, 29. He had the 32-pointer a couple nights ago. You're banking on his shot. Um, so I'm going to say that he's a Bogdan Bogdanovich. I'm going to say that he's a four on Fandle. You know, he's just a straight three for me on DK. I won't have him on Fandle. That's crazy. Same for Zebo. Um, 5,700 on Fandle. If he's going to be playing, is a is a great price. probably it um, if you wanted to have Buddy Heels on DK I would get it but 4600 I'm just there, there are better spots out there now Bulls same sort of scenario um, not the most interesting game in total but both teams are pretty piss poor at defense so first up is Justin Holiday, and that's 5200 on both sides so 26 total um, now that Levine is getting more minutes, I feel like Justin Holiday is sort of like taking an offensive step back. He's a four just because of the game itself. Now, Levine, 7,400 on FanDuel, 6,600 on DK. So you're looking for 37 on FanDuel, which is a lot. He had 40 in the last one, played 30 minutes. Um... That 6,600 price tag is so nice on DK. So I'm going to say that Zach Levine is a 4 on FanDuel and a 3 on DraftKings. Ugh. Jerry and Grant, similar situation, much just much better pricing on DK. 5,900 on FanDuel, 5,400 on DK. Um, he needs 30. Hasn't done it all in his last five, did have the 50 pointer about two weeks ago. I'm not gonna go nuts here. I'm just gonna say that he's a straight four. Now Rolo, 4,400 on FanDuel, 4,600 on DK. You need 22. Um, if he's gonna play like 28 minutes or 36 minutes, it's amazing. Um, it's hard to look past him if you need to pay down at center. I'm gonna say that he's a three. Because it's hard to predict his minutes. Like, I've got him in for 28, which makes it look like an incredible value. But, you know, you have nights where it's 20, 19, 19. They matter. But the main guy to pay attention to, and you've heard me say this more than one occasion, Bobby Portis. Bobby Portis is 5,800 on FanDuel, 6,200 on DK. Miritich is gone. Marking in is hurt. Um, so Portis should be getting, you know, a very solid amount of run. Needs to get to 30. Shouldn't be an issue. Um, to me, he's a fan duel too. I'm a little less interested at the 6,200 price point on DK. So he's a fan duel or a DK3 for me. But you can make the case that he's a two across the board. Final game now, Clippers hosting the Mavs. Clippers 109.25 implied total is second. I really like this Clippers team as an aside. Um, I actually think they're better having traded Blake. I just wish that Pat Beverly was healthy. Can you imagine a Beverly, Bradley, Tobias Harris, Gallinari, DeAndre Jordan lineup? And then, you know, you bring in Lou Williams, rotate in Lou Will with Beverly, 
and Bradley as like a three-headed monster. I didn't even say Teodosic's name right now, but he just becomes so redundant there. You don't really need the things that he brings to the table. I don't know. I just for some reason I really like the Clippers lately. Now Lou Will, 8,400 on FanDuel, 8,300 on DK. So you're looking for 42. Um, has not been there lately. Outside of the gigantic 70 pointer, um, I don't totally love it, just because of all the new bodies. But I'll say that he's a three because it's Lou Will and he's had a great year. Gallinari, 5,700 on FanDuel, 6,100 on DK. So we want, you know, 29. Um, put up 40 in his most recent game. I'm, I'd be fine with having him. As long as his butt feels better. And that's a 3 on FanDuel and a 4 on DK. Uh, DeAndre, I'm not super interested in. He would need 40. Hasn't been there lately. I'm just, I'm not super interested there. Tobias Harris, 6,600 on FanDuel, 6,600 on DK. So that would be 33. Um, he hit that number exactly in his debut. Feels a little high. Um, I'm just going to say he's a 4. I don't expect him to pop up all that often. Avery Bradley, though, 4,500 on FanDuel. That's 22. Um, only had 14 in his debut, but I'd be willing to roll the dice with Bradley as a 4 on FanDuel. I don't have any interest in him on DK. I don't have any interest in the rest of the team. Let's finish it off with Dallas now. Um, Mavs, 103.25 implied total which would be 13th, but defensively, it's a solid matchup. Harrison Barnes is 6,700 on FanDuel. He's 6,400 on DK, so we're looking 33. I'm sure he's had three or four just like, okay, so his last four games he's been bad. Five of six he's been bad. Um, I'm going to say that he's a four just because I like the matchup. Just Harrison, yeah. Harrison Barnes. I, I never capitalize that B the first time I do it. It's so weird. All right, Wesley Matthews. 5,500 on FanDuel, 5,300 on DK. 27 would be the number. Um, two games in the 30s. Had the big 48-pointer about two weeks ago. I'm fine with it. He's a three. Sorry, guys. Dennis Smith Jr., 6,500 on FanDuel, 67 on DK. Not the best DK pricing here. He's 32. Um, been in the high 20s, low 30s. I would like that a little bit more if they didn't have Avery Bradley now. <laughs> well, that was just Taya Dosich and Lou Will. Looked a little bit better. Uh, Yogi Ferrell at 4,100. I mean, he needs to get to 20. He does it from time to time. I'm not super stoked about it, though. I think I've said that a lot today, which is really starting to bother me. Oof, I don't like vocal ticks. Dwight Powell, 4,800 on FanDuel, 3,700 on DK. Um, so you're looking for 25 from him on FanDuel. He's played 31 and 28 minutes in this past two. Uh, if those minutes are ramping up, it looks great. I'm going to say that he's a three for me on not Dwight Howard. Dwight Powell. He's a three for me on FanDuel. But uh, he's a two for me on DraftKings. That's uh, a pretty ridiculous price. It won't take much for him to hit, you know, his 6x number would be 24 at 4,000. So if you just, you know, in that regard, if you think that he's going to be playing 25 plus minutes, it's a no-brainer on DraftKings. Uh, Dirk at 5,200, I'm not wild about. There's just not a ton of upside in the Dirk play. 
And uh, I don't have a ton of interest in Berea either. 4,500 would be 23. Yeah, I'm good. All right, that's the list. Now, let's go throw it into the optimizer and see what comes out. I'm really anxious to see how much Dame Lillard pops up. I'm hoping it's a decent amount. But he's going to be crazy chalky anyway, I would guess. Or I'm just wrong for everything that I've said for the past, I don't know, half hour. However long this has been going. All right, here we go. Boom. Oh, yeah, tons of Dame. Tons of Wilson Chandler, too, which is gross. Okay, so clearly I'm going to be looking at Dame. And then... Uh, Clearly, I'm going to be looking at a lot of, oddly enough, Bobby Portis and Miritich, <laughs> which is so weird. Um, I'd really like to avoid Wilson Chandler. What do we have at center? So it's either a bunch of AD, which is interesting to think about being able to fit that and then it goes to go bear which I think would be m the spot that I would like the most but I don't really like that idea of going go bear and Miritich so figuring out center is going to be my big priority tonight it seems like everybody that's popping up are the guys that I actually liked Let's just, we'll play, let's take a look at AD and let's see what those lineups look like. Lots of exposure to the Jazz and Pelicans game, which I don't necessarily like. I mean, I, in a way, I like it. I just wouldn't want to be overly exposed to it. So, like, something like this, Lillard, Dennis Smith... Holiday, Hood, Simmons, Ingles, Miritich, Portis, Davis. That would be in my genre, but it's not going to look like that for sure. Let's check out DK. It's going to look night and day here. Oh, I can't. This is going to be wild. There's so much weird value here. Bump that to 10. 50. Me. Go. Yeah. Tons of Dwight Powell. Tons of Miritich. Tons of Miles Turner. Okay. So Miritich. Is already in 100% of lineups, but no surprises there. We're going to need Dwight Powell. I'm going to want Miles Turner. Let's grab Will Barton as well. Another guy that was a two. I can get Mitchell, so that fits. Is there any lineup with Dame? Can I get everybody that I like? Okay, so I would entertain that. Lillard, Mitchell, Winslow, Miritich, Turner, Barton, Powell, Jokic. Um, if you wanted to get off of Dame to go after someone else, I mean, I would very clearly understand that. Um, maybe if you wanted to get Drew Holiday in there, you could do something like this. Ish, Drew, Barton, Miritich, Turner, Donovan Mitchell, Blake Griffin, Dwight Powell looks awesome. Or you can get to Jokic if you want to do. Oh, it's a lot better on DraftKings. Oh, I'm tired. Well, that's it, guys. I am done. Um, you guys know the drill. You know, like, subscribe. Um, check out 
follow me on Twitter. Twitter is going to be the best spot where you're going to get any updates as to whatever I'm doing, whether it's updates or whether I'm doing videos or not. So highly recommend following me on Twitter. Um, check out Reddit or check out my website for the projections that you've been looking at. I'll be live tonight starting at 6 o'clock um, for the live show. And this week is the $100 single entry series. So it's, um, yeah, we are here. The NBA Windmill is the, the tournament for the single entry series. And that is going to be my focus for the week. I am going to, um, I'm going to throw my hat in the ring of the $100 single entry for the entire week. Or at least until the point where I know that I, <laughs> I can't win it. So I'll be in this and basically just that tonight. You know, I'll get in the, the $1 and the $3 and everything. But um, I'm throwing one bullet into this every night for the entire week. So it'll be a fun sweat. Uh, that's it, though. Um, thanks for watching, and I will see you tonight at 6.